I've got to leave you with something. And that is a dialogue going on about Yoel Romero versus Israel Adesanya, largely fueled and brought to the public's attention by Adesanya, and of course co-signed by Romero, who would be given his fourth opportunity at a world championship. And on a glance, you could see we're putting a 43-year-old Yoel Romero, who missed weight for one of his world title fights versus Robert Whitaker, missed weight for an interim world title fight against Luke Rockholt. A match, by the way, he won, but is not recognized as the champion merely because he lost that championship on the scale. You could see we're putting him in there doesn't make a world of sense. You could also see where the world just loves Romero. They just do. He's from Cuba, and he's an Olympic hero, and he looks like he's carved out of stone, and he talks with a really rough voice and says things you can't fully understand, but they sure sound cool when they come out of his mouth. By the way, you've never seen a Yoel Romero fight where you questioned his grit, his heart, his determination. He's just one of those guys that people like. And no matter how many opportunities he gets and some that go his way or in championship when they don't, there's still a bad, bad dude standing across from you. And the fact that Izzy Adesanya, who is now the champion, who gets a new contract with championship points and all the luster that goes, why would he ever want to fight Romero? There's just too much to risk. Stylistically, through the history of the sport, the striker versus the wrestler has favored the wrestler. Adesanya wants to fight. How many more things does Adesanya need to do perfect? I have told you guys, I think Adesanya is the biggest star in the sport. I think he is, in front of everybody else. He already has the live gate record. 57,000. That is not going to get beat anytime soon. There's nowhere you could do a fight anytime soon and beat 57,000 live people. That is a meaningful number points and subscribers. There's a lot of ways to look at number, but boy, attendance in one building to come see guy. That's a good one. I believe he is the biggest star. But when I watch the moves he makes, when I watch how he sells courage and backs courage up and calls out the hardest guy at the hardest time at all times, it's just one more thing that Adesanya has come in, played his hand, and played it perfectly. Is that enough to get that fight to happen? Maybe. But my advice to everybody involved here, take a deep breath and let's talk about this in a week. Jared Cannonier is out there making some noise. Not to mention he's got some good wins and he's a rough, rough guy, but he's not a really well-known guy. But he's going to be in the Big Apple which has a lot of media, and should he play his hand correctly, of which I am not predicting he will, but should he play his hand correctly, he will be in front of every media source that he possibly can for the next 48 hours since he doesn't have anything else to do anyway. I don't trust that he will see it that way and do any of those things, but let's give him a chance. There is something special about Till, a former top contender, from 170 pounds sliding up to 185. There's something special there. Let's give him his chance. And you have the fight of the year leading candidate in Kelvin Gastelum, who is about to fight in front of more eyeballs than he ever has and then be given media opportunities. Let's give him his chance. Does Romero make a lot of sense? Would that be a great match and could we get excited? Yes. Is that going to be any less exciting one week from now? No. The only difference one week from now is it may have some new blood and some new competition for what's most exciting. So let's wait until next week. Uncle Jill, Uncle Jill. There's no bad guy like Uncle Jill.